All right, so now we're back on to item 12. Uh, authorize the city manager to distribute a request for proposals. We have two more. Okay, so um, the presenter will be Paul Cremoyan. So Paul, we'll have you read it, and then we'll allow public comment to speak, and then just continue it if uh, council mm -hmm. council agrees. Because this is going to be a long discussion, I feel, and I I'm not staying for it. <laughs> I mean, we got we're working until six thirty tomorrow. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to. Oh, we need that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, P peace, Millet. Yeah. We can do that. Okay, okay. Sorry. Thank, yeah. that's okay. Thank you, <laughs> Mr. Mayor, members of the uh, the City Council. I have 12 slides, so I'll go through really quickly. So, background: uh, at your last meeting of August 18th, um, there were there were certain things related to the GPAC's roles and responsibilities that the City Council wanted to. Uh, clarify so the focus of that meeting was on the GPAC um, the council agreed on the selection that the, the selection of the GPAC was performed properly the council agreed that the GPAC would be the voice of the community and that the council is the ultimate decision maker uh, the council also agreed that the GPAC would work independently from um, council involvement um, they also agreed to receive monthly updates Council agreed that GPAC would make uh, city council recommendations at key milestones and that staff would provide monthly updates uh, at scheduled council meetings. Um, what was not decided at the meeting was um, should the GPAC meetings be open to the public? And there was discussion about that, but there wasn't a consensus that staff received. Does the RFP satisfy council expectations? That's really necessary before we uh, distribute the RFP to consultants. Who should serve on the subcommittee was not discussed either. Uh, and then the, the purpose statement to begin the Envision Campbell process was not determined. So uh, let's just talk briefly about the GPAC meetings. Um, GPAC will meet monthly. We're thinking ideally two meetings per month. Each meeting would last about two hours. GPAC will need uh, that time to accomplish tasks. Public attendance would have, um, if public is going to attend, they're going to have the expectation that they also need to make presentations. Uh, expediting the process could be compromised given time constraints. Uh, GPAC members uh, intended to represent the community's voice is still uh, on the table there. Um, so the question to the council is should GPAC meetings be open to the public? The second one is the RFP. Staff incorporated council and staff suggestions. Um, one of the suggestions was that the process will favor qualifications over cost. Uh, there were various transportation experience uh, requirements identified as qualifications. And one of the things um, that we've heard loud and clear is sustainability is going to be key to this uh, Envision Campbell document. Um, therefore, the question before you is, does the council authorize the city manager to distribute the RFP to consultants? Uh, council subcommittee. City council agreed that a subcommittee should review all proposals. The subcommittee should interview the most qualified consultants. Uh, the subcommittee will then make recommendations to city council for consultant selection. Um, and that the council agreed that staff will manage the consultant contract. So the question before you is, who should serve on the subcommittee. Uh, purpose statement. Uh, council agreed that a purpose statement should start the Envision Campbell process. Staff provided examples or general ideas. I, I, I underlie that because I don't want staff to say these are the ones you need to do. So these are just kind of to get your, your minds thinking of purpose statements to initiate the council's discussion. Council has the ability to defer this to the GPAC, whoever council may want to approve in any case and to expedite the process staff is suggesting that the council decide at this juncture rather than defer it's going to come back to you anyway so the question before you is what is the purpose statement for the envision campbell document then the staff recommendation i, I just grouped all the different questions to begin your discussion that concludes staff's report thank you any questions for staff okay so um before we open it up for the public one of the things that that uh 
I was just mentioned, I think is a pretty good idea. We take action on uh, two and three, and we continue one and four. So that way, just in, in the because of time, and that way we'll be able to hear the public's comments. And items two is talk about the RFP. Uh, three is the subcommittee uh, selection. Um, so that would be, I think, relatively quick as compared to talking about if the meetings are going to be open or closed and the purpose statement. Um, so, open the public hearing. Jennifer Moore is the first speaker. And I have five cards and there's five people, so I think each of you guys are going to get it. Thank you for hanging in, too. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer Moore, 1110 Snooka Avenue. Hi again, and thank you very much for handling affordable housing, by the way. I really appreciate your support of that. I'm here to, to basically fill in the gaps of what Maggie and Susan are going to say, which you can assume I agree with. I am a stack member, a new stack member. The gap that I thought would probably occur after hearing what they were going to talk about was addressing what you just said about being the voice of the community. Uh, so that's my main thing. I also want to give uh, support to the idea that alternates be allowed to attend these meetings in case they're called up and so they're not alternates anymore if you decide that it's not a public, it's a closed situation. In Campbell, I do see disconnect in representation from my area on the City Council, on the Planning Commission, and now in the GPAC in terms of, let's say, underrepresentation by people who actually live in our area. By our area, I mean the stamp area. So San Tomas Area Neighborhood Plan, known as STAMP. I looked on a map. It looks like we represent about 35% of the city of Cancel, uh, Campbell geographically. Uh, although our, our population is a lower, much lower number, we represent a huge amount of long-term residents uh, who would know Campbell historically. We have low turnover in that neighborhood, and we have a high percent of voters. Uh, I would say that that is a very important neighborhood to have more represented in terms of all of our decision-making groups, including the City Council and the Planning Commission. Most of the people in the stamp boundaries don't know what stamp is, don't know they're within that area, that it has the representation of the San Tomas Area Community Coalition. And I'll wrap it up by saying Thank they you. don't know about DAP and GPAC, and they should. So I hope you put more representation where it should be, because we vote. Thank you. And, and it is dispersed pretty evenly through the city, but the majority of the GPAC applicants lived in the downtown core. So that made it pretty challenging. Um, it was actually really challenging going through that. Uh, Joanne Fairbanks. <clears throat> <laughs> oh um, here are copies of my comments for council and staff. There should be enough. Thank you. Um, Joanne Fairbanks. I'm a resident of the city of Campbell. Um, I have two Thanks. comments uh, on this, um, and I'll try and really collapse them. Um, I'll speak first about um, the public meeting issue or thoughts. Um, I see this advisory committee, um, this particular advisory committee, as involved in a reflective process, not a decisioning, decisioning process. And so girdling this particular advisory committee with public meeting requirements, I think, um, would unnecessarily protract the work or um, make it more difficult. So I'm not in favor of that, actually, as much as I'm in favor of um, the public process. Sorry, I'm trying to go here. <laughs> uh, I'm really, um, the purposing statement is really, the needed statement has been stated because it will focus and anchor our work. Um, I'm wanting to give you comments um, about the work of the committee and give where my head is at and why um, this purposing statement is particularly important. Here's where I'll be. 
Um, this work is an opportunity to integrate Campbell's past with its present and its future. It's taking soundings about what's working and not working in the general plan based upon who Campbell was, is now, and will be. Does this document operationally manifest and act in line with our stated and unstated values? Have our values shifted or changed? What doesn't change about Campbell? What do we hold dear for yesterday, today, and tomorrow? Does this tool use, use its users, or are we using it? Or is it serving those whom we invite into our city, like up, businesses please? and tourists? And I'm trying. I'm trying. I know this is this is a rough. I, would night. you bear with me on this? I, uh, but, uh, if it, if you're going to read verbatim, then I, I've already read it, and we all have a copy um, in our hand. So I'd rather just get to the next person and get home. Okay, I'll this make. This is a long night. So I appreciate. Yeah, that. when it hits red, so you I'll make. Just call I'll it give it red. one last sentence. This is a challenge to let us examine if we have been careless with the fabric of our past or present and how we could be in our future. Thank you. All these comments is Thank how you. I will be thinking as I look at this. Um, Appreciate it. And we'll, I hope we'll, we'll that have gives a you more information coming forward as we make more decisions in regards uh, to this. So the next speaker is going to be Susan Landry. Can you tell Susan? me how this will be continued? I got confused uh, the about The next meeting. That. Uh, well, we haven't decided that yet, but, but so... But right now, um, we're just trying to get through this. Tonight, I know. Yeah, yeah. And, and thank you very much for your patience. I, I mean, but th this is the longest meeting in five years I've had. No, I've been here till 1 o'clock before, sir. That was probably planning commission. <laughs> oh, maybe. All right, all right. Wrong group. All right, that didn't start my time yet. All right. Get me started here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was selected as an alternate, and I'm very confused what that means. A letter went out on July 30th to 17 members saying they are a member, but no alternates were included as a CC on that. It's not clear if as an alternate I'm considered as public which means that I either can or cannot attend all the meetings. I see my role as an alternate as similar to me being on jury duty. If I'm not there during the whole process, how do I know what's going on? And I have been on jury duty. Um, so I need you to clarify, I want to attend all the meetings. I want to be there. I want to participate. I want to engage, and I want to be involved. I don't know if you guys want me to, but that's what I would like to do. <laughs> Um, under desired qualifications in the RFP, I'd like to see something added about local Campbell experience and familiarity with Campbell's history. There mentions nothing. San Jose has points that you get on your RFPs if you're local. I'd like to see that added to the RFP. I also want to, under the vision statement, you guys talk about what's in the document right now, us being a small town characterized by an active involvement of its citizens in all aspects of the community. We want to be safer, well-balanced, and connected with our neighborhoods. I think by opening this up to the public at every single meeting could be an obstacle to keeping it at an hour and a half, but I do think that alternates should not be public. <laughs> I'll go back to that. And I also was curious about the City Council Selection Committee and if there was a way that one of the GPAC member, whether it be their chairperson or whoever, be it part of the, maybe a non-voting part of the subcommittee selection group that's going to read the RFPs, that it might be helpful to have a GPAC member. So I'm excited to be an alternate. I just want to know if I can even show up. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that, that should be uh, up for discussion. Maggie, you're next. Um, well, I'm, I'm not a member of the GPAC. I'm a, a public, just a public person. I have, um, I really, really want to know where the GPAC members live in relationship to the city of Campbell. I'm, I, I don't need to know who lives where, but I want to know where the dots are. You guys talked about a map that you looked at, and... You talking to Mike? I'm sorry. So I would I really like to see that. Um, I want to count on what the city. So there must be options of public 
involvement. I could sit in the audience with, with my neighbors and we could hear what is being said. We, the door could be locked and we could not hear what's being said. Um, Mark Linder said to me that there would be numerous public meetings to solicit community input. input. That's when he told me I wasn't on the committee. So as a non-person on the committee, there's going to be ample opportunities to participate in the general plan update process with numerous public hearings. Mm -hmm. So I want to really know what the specifics are of that. I really am interested in the development, the future development of the city. Lots of my neighbors are interested in the same thing, despite the fact the place is empty. Uh, and and <laughs> I just, I want to be part of it. I just want to be part of it. I want to be part of it. Thank you. Thanks. Good night. <laughs> Sleep well. Uh, Lisa Harmer, last speaker of the night. <laughs> okay, so possibly last speaker of the night. We'll see. You never know. Good morning, council members. My name is <laughs> My name is Lisa Harmer, and I live at 865 Briarwood Way in Campbell. Um, I am speaking as the president of the Campbell Village Neighborhood Association, also known as Cambrian 36. Three of my four other board members were here earlier in the evening. They bailed. The fifth is fighting the Butte Fire. Um, our association board presented three concerns about the GPAC to the City Council on August the 15th. Our first concern um, and our understanding at the end of the meeting on the 15th was that the council had not decided or had not approved of the way the, the GPAC was selected. Um, so our first concern about the failure to follow the published GPAC selection process was not fully reviewed during the subsequent council discussion. The committee selected by two council members moved forward without a council vote of acceptance. Our second concern about diverse representation and gender equality was dismissed with a council member stating that the GPAC is geographically diverse, although the city has been unwilling to provide public records to support this statement, and that gender equality on the committee is a fact. Right now, 20% of the GPAC comes from one medium-sized neighborhood. Other neighborhoods have no representation at all. In terms of gender equality, in the year 2015, a 70-30% split in male-female ratio of any committee that, that hopes to accurately represent a U.S. city is simply not acceptable. Women have been fighting for the right to be heard, to have a seat at the table for more than 200 years. The GPAC for Envision Campbell 2040 is not the place to set back the clock. The current GPAC simply does not represent the complex demographic and geographic diversity of our city and therefore cannot produce high quality input to the city council nor claim to accurately represent the people of Campbell to any neighborhood or organization. The city will lose a lasting will be losing an opportunity to create valuable community ambassadors. In summary, I am here on behalf of my neighborhood association to again ask the city council to improve the GPAC by, and therefore improving our future. We respectfully ask the City Council to, one, please reevaluate the makeup of the GPAC. <coughs> Two, identify underrepresented or absent geographic and demographic groups. They do exist, particularly young adults. As Can they you just go to each of the numbers, example. please? You're, you're last, last one. Last one. Thank you. Three, reach out to those identified in item two and add appropriate members to the GPAC to make a committee that truly represents all of Campbell. So their work, work will provide the City Council with diverse and valuable insights. Thank you. Appreciate I'm, that. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, for, for that whole selection thing, we had 41 applicants. There were significant neighborhoods that were not, that, okay, that, that, that weren't uh, represented at all. So. We don't have an applicant. How do we pick someone? Knock on doors. Um, two and three. One, two, three, and four. How do, how do you guys feel about, about breaking this down? I, I, I'm not, I don't have time to sit through this whole thing. I'm, I'm done. Yeah. So my inclination would be to, to certainly do two items two and three, um, and I'm prepared to make a nomination um, of Council Member Gibbons for uh, one of the uh, City Council subcommittee members. I would also at least have a, a trial balloon for doing number four and deferring that uh, initially to the um, GPAC and then having it come back to us for approval. So we don't have to deal with it twice and so we can send it away tonight.
to have them chew on it. They're, they're sort of in some ways better prepared to, for, uh, than us to um, to have the, the, the initial crack on it, and then it would come back to us. I'm fine uh, with being uh, on the subcommittee uh, with Councilmember Gibbons if she's okay with that. And for the purpose statement, if we send that to the GPAC, that will give them something to do while we're – Trying to figure the rest of it out, but when this comes back, I would like to see the the report again because I think there were a couple things in there that I'd like to talk about in the future. Councilman Resnikoff, uh, quick comments. Um, I fully support Councilmember Gibbons and the mayor being on there. I think that's a, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, with number four, my only question is if we you want to give this to the GPAC to do something with it, but we don't answer number one, so we don't know how the meeting's going to be held. So if we decide the meeting is public and the <laughs> meeting was private, it's useless. So I would say we table four. We give them some advice to what we think. They come back and change it. Then we look at it. But I, I don't see how we have them do something till we answer number one. Yeah, All right. That, that makes sense. All right. So I will um, move uh, item number two, adopt resolution to authorize the city manager to distribute a request for proposal to qualify consultants necessary to prepare the envision Campbell plan and EIR and an optional zoning ordinance update and to uh, select the city council subcommittee members, council member Gibbons and mayor Christina um, to do what that says uh, for the recommendation to city council of the most qualified firm. Second. We'll second. Continue one and two to a later date. And, and uh, yes, meeting. I will uh, include in my motion, uh, including uh, continuing items one and four to yeah, the next regularly scheduled council meeting, <laughs> October 6th, I'm told. Which is a long meeting as well. Second. Excellent. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Oh, excuse me. Oh. That's a roll call. That's a roll oh, sorry. call. Sorry. Oh. Uh, roll call. Council Member Gibbons? Uh, it's too late to vote no, so I'll vote yes. <laughs> <laughs> Council Member Reznikov? I'm tempted, but aye. <laughs> <laughs> Council Member Katowski? Aye, with a good morning. Ma Vice Mayor Baker? Aye. Mayor Christina? Aye. All right.